Are you guys still good? So refreshing, huh, tonight? How many are ready for the word? Don't worry. We have so much to catch up on. I just want to stay in the zone right now. Is that okay? Yes. I want you to go with me. Uh, worship, you guys can sit down. That's cool. You guys are awesome. Maybe piano can just stay up and play. Be awesome. You guys feeling good? Yes. Yeah? I want you to, uh, I actually want you to go to your Bible or your iPads or your iPhones, and I want you to turn with me. Go, I want you to go there because I want you to screenshot it, save it, do whatever you have to do, write it down. But Psalm 78, verse 41, and I want you to get this in your spirit tonight. How many are ready to stretch? Yes. It's for real, like for real. I'm not like, yay, hey, yay. No, like for real. Like, man, I'm, I'm so ready to just see change amen because we could talk we preach change every year but sometimes people hardly change amen isn't that the truth yeah so we gotta something's gotta break tonight psalm 78 are you there verse 41 i want you to tattoo this on yourself with a pen if you like whatever but i want you to look at this every single day for the next week and i want you to get this in your spirit i don't want you just to read it as a verse i want you to read it as a prophetic word that you got at Elevate Night. Are you ready? Yes. He says, yes, again and again. Everybody say again, again. and again. again. Come on, how many of us are challenged with things again and again? Same old patterns, same old behaviors, same old attitudes again and again. Same drama again and again, right? Same way of thinking again. And so I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to show you what he's saying here. Okay, David is saying, hey, I'm the first one to be vulnerable and say to you that again and again, I fall in this place of tempting God. I fall in this place of negativity. I fall in this place of an emotional roller coaster. And how many know that David was one of the most emotional people in the Bible? But let me tell you something. That was a gift from God. Just because you're an emotional person doesn't make you in error. It just means that, man, there's something beautiful that God wants to do with that emotion. God wants to create something beautiful out of that. But here it says, yes, again and again, obviously this isn't a negative connotation. And this is obviously talking about the children of Israel. He's kind of remembering this. It says they tempted God. And what? Limited. limited. They did what? Limited. Again and again, they limited they limited God, the Holy One of Israel. And tonight, I'm not here to talk to you about, you know, how we only limit God. But I want to bring to you also, how do you bring yourself into limitations? Because we can only focus on, well, you know what, we're, we're limiting God or I'm limiting God. But, but, but I, I have found that the person that is always causing limitation is myself. It's not my environment. I can complain about my environment all I want. You can complain about your environment all you want. But at the end of the day, you and I are responsible to limit ourselves or live with the unlimited God. He's so unlimited. But it says again and again, and I don't know about you, but I know that we just got done with this new series uh, that we just finished called See Beyond. But if we don't see beyond, we're going to limit what God wants to do in our life. No more limitations. God is saying it's, it's, it's time. It, it, I, I, want, I want you to, to push forward. I, I want you to, to see beyond everything that you've experienced in the last decade and get ready for a whole brand new decade amen it's not just 2020 it's the next 10 years to have vision to have purpose man to, to have a stronger most deep intimate relationship with jesus because in the days we're living in he is the only anchor that's going to help us stay in place as the winds and the waves of this life they come and try to blow us off and and get us off course and get us distracted we need the anchor amen it's only when you challenge your capacity. I want you to hear this. It's only when you challenge your capacity that you'll discover your capacity. God wants us to discover 
our capacity, and don't miss this new series, da Dangerous Theology, this weekend, because I'm going to hit this hard. But God wants, God wants us to ex extend. God wants us to, to grow our capacity, kind of like the talents, the story of the talents. I'm not going to go into it, but you remember the talents? To one he gave one, to one he gave two, to one he gave what? Five. And, and each one, it was given according to their what? Ability. Each one, every single one. Listen, even if you're someone sitting here tonight and you only have one talent, praise God. That means you have the ability to reproduce, to multiply yourself. Amen? Amen. You and I can stop limiting ourselves from going to that next level. And so we have to challenge ourselves. We cannot be content. And I know this is an area where I struggle with because I'm never content. It's a blessing and a cursing. It's a blessing because I'm always pushing every single person around me forward. But it's also a cursing because sometimes you can be that person that's never satisfied. It's never good enough. So there's got to be a healthy balance there. If not, it becomes very toxic, which, hey, I'll, I'll be honest. I've been toxic in that area sometimes. Sometimes I look at people and I see their potential. I'm like, come on. And then that, that discontent can begin to just settle in there and then you start getting a little bit ah you know what i'm saying a little cray cray <laughs> don't be content with where you're at don't be content with your capacity challenge it challenge it what's your capacity right now challenge it all every single one of us you know there is a capacity of 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 spiritualness, there's a capacity of of emotional stability, there's a capacity of, of God's blessing, there's a capacity of God's favor, but but it doesn't just happen. We have to challenge ourselves to expand our capacity, to grow this year, to change this year, to renew our mind this year, to to really begin to face our reality, to face our truths and say, you know what? I've been blaming God for too long. i got to take some responsibility here. Are you hearing me tonight? Can't be content with our capacity, not when you serve a limitless God, guys. Let's go back to the verse. Again and again, they limited the Holy One of Israel. Over and over again, they kept limiting God. They kept limiting God. They kept limiting what God can do. They kept li limiting who God was. They kept limiting what God can give to each person, the children of Israel, what they could experience. He kept, he kept blessing them. He kept pouring out blessings to them. I mean, think about it. He would provide food in the desert, water in the desert. He was providing shade for them on very hot days. He was providing pillars of fire at night when it was cold in the desert. I mean, God just kept providing, and they just kept tempting God, tempting God, blaming God. God, where are you? Da, 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 da. And they tempted God, and they limited what God wanted to do in their life. I don't know about you, but I want to move us to the place where you and I start challenging our capacity individually. Like we should start checking up on ourselves like, hey, uh, Pastor Anthony, how's your capacity doing? Are you wearing stretchy pants tonight? <laughs> Amen. Not for tacos, but you know what I'm saying? Are we, are, we, are we doing our part to say, I am growing, I am stretching? For example, when you look at uh, Peter and John, here's the story. They're going, to, they're going to church. And as they're going to church, there's this guy who had been basically lame since he was a child. And he sat at the doors of the church and he would beg people, mind you, this is what he did all his life. This is all he knew. So how many know that he was conditioned to be a beggar? Sometimes some of us, because of our experience in life, you have been conditioned without even knowing that you've been conditioned to think a certain way. Some of us have been conditioned to be poor. Some of us have been conditioned to be negative. Some of us have been conditioned to be unhealthy or toxic. Some of us have been conditioned to always see the worst case scenario. Now, aren't you glad that though some of us have already been conditioned to be some way or have some behavior or some habit that God always has unlimited power to renew and change 
that condition and give you something afresh? That's the, that's, the, that's the unlimited God I'm talking about tonight. And so Peter and John, they're going to church, and they see this dude at the front doors of Elevate Church, and, and the guy was doing what he did every single day, that he was conditioned to beg, and he kept asking for money, asking for money. Listen, it's not his fault. It's what he knew. He was conditioned to just live this. And he's, he's there at the door, and he's like, give me some. And Peter and John, they, they stop, and they look at him, and he's expecting that he's going to go ahead and get what he's used to getting every single. See, some of us, God's about to, to shift something in you where things that you've been so comfortable with, God, God, God is ready to just kind of remove that from you. Not, not to let you fall or let you down. I mean, you may, you may be Peter just swimming in the water for a little bit, but he'll save you. He'll save you. And let's look at the scripture here. Acts chapter 3 verse 4 through 8 says this. And so they looked at him. Peter looked straight at him. Everybody say he looked straight at him. Straight As did John. Then Peter said, look at us. Sometimes you got to look at people like that. Look, look at me right now. What's wrong with you? <laughs> look at us. So the man gave them his attention. He gave them what? Attention. See, your condition can distract you, but you put the attention back on God, something's about to change. Expecting to get something from them, then Peter said, silver and gold, listen, money, something's going to change today, buddy. <laughs> silver and gold, money, whatever you have been accustomed to receiving, whether it's pity, whether it's, oh, poor you, whether it's always being on the receiving end, God, God said, no, we're going to shift that. We're going to do something about that. He says, silver and gold I do not have. I love this. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And what? Instantly. The man's feet and ankles became strong. This is obviously a miracle, huh? How many still believe in miracles? God can do a miracle. Listen, God, God can do a miracle in your life tonight. God can do a miracle this week in your life. Now I'm understanding, but are you ready? Obviously, this guy was ready. He was ready. It says, then he went with them. Look at this. This guy, a miracle. The guy, he's, he had never been able to walk. Since his birth, he's been lame. And now it says, and then he went with them into the church, into the courts, walking and jumping. And what was he doing? Praising God. Is it Catalina? Katarina. Girl, you're going to see youth jumping, and they're going to be wild. Get ready. I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's going to be amazing. So, 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 so what, what happens with us? How does this apply to me, Pastor? We need to stop insisting our condition. We, we, keep, we keep petting, embracing the condition of our heart, the condition of our life. We keep insisting that, well, this is who I am. Well, the reason I'm sad is because, well, I grew up in a family that dealt with depression. And you start insisting, well, because my family line, uh, because my pedigree, whatever that may be, you start convincing yourself this man that was sitting at the door, at the gates, every, he was convinced that this is who he was for the rest of his life. But how many know that the story is so powerful? Because here you have two guys called the church. Let me say the church. See, sometimes we think that the church should just come and just comfort us, right, and just love on us, which is awesome. I love comforting the church. Oh, my God, I love your hair. <laughs> but I believe that, that God, beyond comforting us, I believe that God wants to challenge us in our dysfunction sometimes. To really look inside and to realize that God uses the church to confront something that's dysfunctional, something that's broken, something that's messed up. Kind of like Peter and John, they walk to the gate, the guy's dysfunctional. He's conditioned to live this way for so long. And then he's expecting to receive the same type of conditions that he was accustomed to. But then two guys came, showed up and said, no, today we're going to change this. And he said, look at me. That didn't sound very compassionate, did it? 
I mean, he didn't, didn't say like, hey, guy, uh, I got no change, bro. Uh, sorry, man. Maybe I'll get, hit you up tomorrow. No. He said, look at us right now. That's, that's, that's not comfort. That's, come on, let's get this act together. They challenged the guy, look at us. I can't give you silver. I can't give you gold. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, man, get up. And the guy got up with them, and he walked. And that is what the church should be in 2020. Amen? It's not just a place of comfort, right, which we love comfort here. Okay, don't get me wrong. We love to hug you and do all those things. But I want you to come here with the attitude of, man, I hope pastor challenges or any speaker challenges, confronts me to the point where I have to begin to remove every limitation that is holding me. God bless that one person. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? I know it's hurting you. It's called change. It's change. Stop bringing God your limitations. We do that too much. Like, God, I can't do it because of this. God, I can't do it because of that. God, I don't have enough money. God, listen, if we did church having everything in perfect alignment, this church would not exist. No. I had to stop bringing God limitations. Y'all remember, this is funny now, but, man, when we first started doing live stream, we didn't have these awesome cameras now. God bless the family that blessed us with these cameras at this church. But you know what? I was like, okay, how do we get on live stream? We need to get the gospel out. It's in our vision. How do we do it? And I thought, well, we can't afford cameras. So I just bought like $150 camcorders. And I hung them on those poles. If I waited for the money to come in, if I waited for someone to come and pat me on the back and be like, oh, poor pastor, let me try to figure it out. Let's do a cookie drive. Let's do a this drive. Let's do... I would have never done anything. I had to make a personal decision and say, you know what? We may not have the finances, but what do we have? Let's, let's do something. It's kind of like the woman. You remember Elisha and the widow? Okay, do you, do you remember when, if you don't know the story very well, she, she has her husband, he dies. Elisha had always come to this family, loved this family. His family was very good to them. The husband was a devout, faithful man of God, but he ends up dying. And the man owes a lot of money to a lot of people. And this one guy that they owe money to, he comes and he basically said, hey, listen, if you don't pay the debt, those kids, they're mine. They're my servants. I'm taking them from you. Can you imagine being a parent and having someone come and take your kids? Just think for, just think for a second. And Elisha shows up on the scene and he says, what's wrong with you, girl? What's, what's going on? And she said, my husband died. You know he was a good man. You know he was faithful to God. You know he loved God. You know he was good. And, and, and he left us with all this debt, and we owe so many people money, and now they want to take my kids. And Elisha said to her this, what do you want? See, the first place of breaking a limitation is you got to ask yourself, what do I want? Not what don't I have. He came, he immediately came with that first, boom, what do you want? What was it? He was removing the cap. He wanted to find out what is she dreaming about. And he said, you know, she's like, well, uh, I, you know, obviously she wants, my, she wants her kids. And, and he said, okay, so now what do you have? And she's like, well, I got, I got some oil. And she's like, what I want is, I want, obviously I need some oil. I need some stuff, right? And then, and then and now you have Elisha who says, okay, here's what I want you to do. I, I want you to go ahead and I want you to go and knock on every possible door that you can think of. And I want you to gather every single jar that you can get and I want you to bring it with you. I mean, just think about this. As she's talking to Elisha, she's immediately going back to her condition. What do I mean by that? She's thinking, but what I need is oil. I don't need jars. And sometimes we think we need something more than something else. But how many know that God knows exactly what we need? He knows exactly what we need. And she said, well, he's like, girl, just go do what I said. He, what was he doing? He was breaking a mindset. See, sometimes you can be so focused and consumed with where you're at that you can't see the bigger picture of what God wants to do in you. And so he sends her on her way. She grabs as many jars as she can. You know the story. And he, she comes back to the man of God, Elisha. And Elisha says, okay. He, he said, he, listen what he says. He said, now go to your room, 
shut the door behind you and take your kids with you. Ooh, that's talking about the holy of holy place. That basically means that, you know what? He went ahead and gave her the imagination of an unlimited God, but how many know that she had to go do the work? So then the girl comes back with her kids, shuts the door. Some of us need to shut the door, get in a quiet place, and start seeking heaven. And the Bible says that as she obeyed the word of the Lord, the girl grabs that. She had a little, just all she had was a jar with a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. And he told her directly, you go in there, you close the door, and you start filling every oil. How do you fill every single jar knowing you only got this much? How do you do that? The only way you can do that is when you know that you have this much. You have a God who's this big. And so she starts pouring the oil, and the oil keeps pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. And listen, she filled every single jar. Then she comes out to the man of God. She says, okay, I did it. She's like, he's like, okay, uh, is there more jars? Is there, is there more? She's like, well, the moment I poured the oil in the last jar, it says that the oil stopped. Here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. God's oil never, never stops. The only thing that stops is us having the capacity, right? The girl was focused on the oil. Elisha was focused on the capacity. Go find as many jars as you can. Bring them, and then we'll, we'll fill them. It's not that there's a lack of oil. God's presence, God's person, God's power, God's love, God's provision. God is always, he's just looking for someone that will be empty, that will be ready and willing to be poured into. Amen? Amen. That's what God wants to do for us in 2020. God wants this for your life. He wants it for my life. But we have to challenge ourselves to, to see beyond, to see beyond our dysfunction. Sometimes we can only be looking at how messed up we are. And you can stay there. You can live there for a long time. And then one day wake up and then regret like, dang, I just lost three years of my life. I lost five years of my life. I've lost ten years. Man, I've been funky for this long. Like all that for nothing. Not knowing that the God of oil was ready to pour it out on you. Amen? Amen. He wants to pour out favor. God's, listen, God's favor never runs out. God's blessing never runs out. God's healing never runs out. God's comeback never runs out. God's breakthrough never runs out. God never runs out of anything you and I need. Never. But we have to, we have to remove the lid. We have to remove the lid. The jar was closed. The moment she opened that jar, God poured it out. We have to remove the lid of limitation that's keeping us from the place that God wants to bring us into, whether it's healing whether it's restoration, whether it's having a comeback, whether it's breakthrough. Listen, or you can just stay there and do nothing and then just keep thinking that one day something's going to change. No, listen, something will change when you start making the changes. Elisha told her, go to every possible person. You know, I, I don't know how many jars there were. That'd probably be a good study, but I'm sure the girl went to many houses, knocked on many doors, and had to convince those people to please lend her those jars. And what's more impressive, here's what I love about the whole story. It says that once she was finished and Elijah said, okay, girl, now go and sell this oil and pay all your debts. Look at this. I love this part. She said to her, pay all your debts and whatever is left over, live on that. So I'm going to know that, man, when God blessed, he blessed. How do you live on whatever's left over? Because God says, I will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask, hope, think, imagine. God says, I'll do more than that. Amen? That's what God is. God deserves a big hand clap for that right there. Come on. I'm telling you, man, I love this. You got to challenge you. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to challenge yourself this year. Yeah. And, and listen, and look at them nicely. And I'm not being funny. I want you to say this to them, whether you like it or not. It's time to challenge your dysfunction. Because we all, how many know we all got a little dysfunction in us? Amen. Don't be looking all cute on me and everything. We all got a little cray cray in us. 
Every single, you can, you can listen, you can pretend you're a saint, you can look like you're a saint, you can smell like you're a saint, but let me tell you, under every saint is a cray-cray. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. I'll give you scripture for that too. And it says cray-cray. Man, time's already running out. Wow. Did you guys enjoy tonight? Okay, hold on. I want to get this last part out. I skipped so much. Dang. God. Let me skip that. Okay. Oh, can I, can I share with you what, what I'm, I, listen, I wrote all this down for me this year. Can I just re read that to you real fast? Okay, so check this out, because I've been asking myself while I was gone, I'm like, okay, what lids are you going to remove, Mauricio? Like, what, what are you going to remove so that God can pour? And so I wrote a few of them down. So I put, this is what I'm focusing on 2020, and I wrote it this way. This is what I'm focusing on 2020. Pray, read my Bible, and study while others are sleeping. Decide while others are delaying. Prepare while others are daydreaming. Begin while others are procrastinating. Work while others are wishing. Save while others are wasting. Give while others are hoarding. Listen while others are talking. Smile while others are frowning. Persist while others are quitting. And let me tell you something. You want to talk about a challenge that's going to be? But you have to decide at some point and say, you know what? I need to remove the lid for this next season of my life. If not, you'll just go 2021, 2022, 2023. Again and again, they limited the Holy One of Israel. So there's three ways that we limit God. Number one, look on the screen. Number one. Three areas we limit God by. Number one is what we see. Everybody say, what I see. What Our challenge is always going to be what you see right now in your current situation. That's the first, the first place that we limit God is what we see. You look at your situation. You look at your problem. You look at the challenge. You look at your family. You look at your children. You look at your finances. You look at your health. And, and it's, going to, it's going to get you in a place of this emotional dysfunction again. How many know that emotions are powerful, right? They're so powerful. I love, listen, God, God gave us emotions, but they're not, they're not great when they control you, right? We are called to take authority over our emotions. Even Paul talks that in, in 3 John, he says, he says, I pray that, that you may prosper and be in good health even as your what? Soul prospers. So God cares about not only your spiritual maturity, God cares about your emotional maturity developing as well. We have to start removing the limitation of our emotional stability and realize that if Paul was praying for my emotions, man, how much more should I be praying for that as well? Because God wants me to progress. That word prosper means to progress. It means to thrive. Come on, that word progress. If you guys put that up there real quick, flourish, thrive, do well, bloom, progress. I want to do all those things. How about you emotionally, right? I don't want to be controlled. Any I don't want to be reacting to my circumstances, I want to respond, amen, and say, God, you're going to get me out of this situation. I know it looks bad. I know it sounds bad. I know that it's not looking as great as I want, but God, I know that you are faithful because greater is he that lives inside of me than he that's in the world. What the enemy meant for bad, God, you're going to turn around and you're going to, you're going to work it out for my good, and you start thinking differently. You start talking differently. So what we see, our challenge is always going to be what we see. The enemy will always work to get us to see something other than what God has shown us. He's going to work overtime on you. That's where the tormenting thoughts come. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You'll never get there. You'll never do it. But let me tell you something. God brings Abraham out. Think about this story. He brings him out of a tent. Abraham is in the desert. He's Abram at this time. Nothing's going for him. His life sucks. Everything sucks about him. He has no child. God brings him out and says, hey, look up in the sky. What was he doing? He brought him out of his tent. He brought him out of his lid. And he brings him out. And he says, look up. Count the stars if you can. And he looked up, he's like, one, two, yeah, I'm sure he tried. <laughs> he couldn't do it. And God says, 
and, and that's what I'll do for you. I'm the unlimited God who can do beyond anything that you see right now. I love that. Number two, what we believe. Ever say what we believe. Okay, these are the three things that we limit God by. What we see, what we believe. The word of God will always bend your will towards him. Your word will always bend your will towards what you want. You have to remember this. And what I mean by this is if you remember the story of Peter when he's fishing all night, him and his partners, they have a business, a fishing company, and, and they've been fishing and toiling and working hard. They come back. They got nothing. They got nothing. And Jesus shows up on the scene, and he says, hey, uh, cast your nets on the other side. Mind you, if you read the story, the Bible says that they were already folding their nets. Y'all know those big nets? Okay, when you go out and you get seawater on those nets, you got to wash every single net. Mind you, they were on many boats, so they had already finished washing them, cleaning them, folding them. And then Jesus says, hey, y'all want to throw your net on the other side? And Peter was like, you know what, Jesus, here's the deal, man. We've been doing this all night. Nothing's working. Limit, limit, limit. You know, um, we were, we've been doing this for this many years. We already know the weather patterns, condition, 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 <laughs> right? There's, he, he's giving every excuse to Jesus. But here's what I love about the verse. When you read the story, the Bible says that after Peter finally probably realized that he's talking to Jesus, the great physician, Jesus, the miracle maker, the miracle worker. He, he literally catches himself in the track, and he says, nevertheless, <laughs> at your word, I'll cast my net. See, God's word will bend you to him, but your word will bend you the other way. You got to bend towards God's word. You got to bend. If God said it, then so be it. Anything outside of that, it's just you. Can I give you the last one? Everybody say, but nevertheless. So when you go negative, just say, but nevertheless. <laughs> right, just try that again. Ready? One, two, three. But yeah, so someone just take you off at work. But nevertheless, I will choose to love you, forgive you, serve you, like you. Ah, all for Jesus, amen. The third thing that we do that puts a limitation on God in our life is what we say. We say what we say. We limit ourselves with the language that we've created in our household. We limit ourselves by the language. Every single one of you, you have a culture of how you talk right now. And it's either a culture of life or it's always a culture of death. But let me tell you something. What you say is what you get. And I love this story because you look at the story in Mark chapter 11, verse 20 through 24, and I'll read this one. It says, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembering, look at this, and Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you what? Cursed. Was what? Withered away. So Jesus walked by and basically, if you know the full story, he wanted some figs. There was no figs. Listen, the tree had all the conditions of a fig tree. They had the leaves. They had everything was there like it said, fig tree. But the closer Jesus got to the tree, he realized there was no fruit on that tree. Let me tell you something. When you limit God, God will come up to you and he'll realize you either have fruit or no fruit. What do you do with the talents? To the guy who buried, who limited God, he took his away and gave it to the guy with the five or ten by then. Listen, God doesn't play. God wants us to bear fruit. Fruit in our spirit, fruit in our thoughts, fruit in our love, fruit in everything we do. God wants us to bear fruit in our relationships. God wants us to bear fruit in everything we do. Everything, but we have to watch what we say. So he says, hey, isn't that the tree that you cursed? So Jesus answered and said to them, look at this, have faith in God, man. Look at this. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt, and does not what? Doubt, and does not what? Doubt. Come on, cast down every, doubt. every vain imagination, every doubt, you cast it. But does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says or she says will be done. He or she will have whatever they say. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will 
have them. And how many know that we need to start working out our spiritual conditioning of how we see, how we believe, and what we say? Let's condition ourselves, amen? amen. 2020, we're going to condition those three areas of our life. And we're going to say, man, that's it, God. Remove the lid. I'm, I'm removing the lid. Now fill me with the oil of change. Stand to your feet with me. Thank you, Father. Let's lift our hands to heaven because this is a prayer for all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Father, this is my year year. to serve an unlimited God. God. Jesus, I repent repent. for bringing my limitations to you. you. I I repent for not believing you at your word, for not honoring your word, for not standing on your word. You're the answer to everything in my life. Jesus, I'm ready for you to change my heart so that you can fill my boat. Change my heart so you can fill my boat. Jesus, I pray tonight that I will see differently. I will believe differently. And I will speak differently. I will condition my spirit, man, to know your word, to trust your word, to believe your word. I thank you that this is the year where I'm breaking off every limitation that has held me back from favor, blessing, prosperity, healing, restoration. Forgive me, Lord, for talking myself out of my breakthrough. Tonight, there's a turnaround. I believe it. I see it. And I speak it into fruition. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Every eye closed, every head. Yeah, give the Lord a big hand clap. I challenge you, go home. And I know that we're already in February, but, you know, look at the things that you're writing. Are you believing for them? Imagine, come on, God said to us tonight, I want you to imagine. I'm going to start imagining the best case scenario, amen? Amen. You know, some of you are believing to see your family come to Christ. Some of you are believing to start a business. Some of you are believing to be a little bit more, you know, emotionally healthy. Some of you are believing to start being so so cray-cray all the time, you know, like on steroids. And you, but you know what? Imagine yourself being just like this loving, caring, forgiving, huh? Giving, cherishing person. Just said, I can see myself. I, I, I see the new me. I see it. I can see it. I I. I can imagine it. Yes, I see it. And you watch what God will do. Listen, this, this, this isn't fluff. This is God's word. Amen.